there, I'm Sean from The Velvet Attic, back again with you, and I'm very excited actually because I'm going to show you today um, some of our new or new products um, in a variety of sizes that you'll be able to use. Um, and the exciting part about it actually is that it's going to help all our clients and stockists and that, that find it very difficult to paint perfect stripes. Um, I know we limited, we were limited many years ago. I also had to use the masking tape and um, three things were a problem. Number one, I found that uh, the bleed through underneath tends to happen more, uh, but I have a technique obviously that will help with that. Secondly, as you did um, extra techniques maybe over the tape while you're busy with stripes, it would get wet and buckle. Um, like paper would and that didn't work either so that was the second problem. Third problem I found and our clients found was if you happen to put your masking tape down on anything that doesn't have tooth in other words that it's non-porous um, a metal cupboard a, a plastic pot um, anything like that and you didn't allow your paint enough curing time when you pulled your masking tape off, it tended to pull the base color off at the same time. And as you know, with a lot of workshops that are happening around the country and um, that you can attend in that, you, you can't really paint your base coat and leave it 24 hours and let it cure on a non-porous surface and then come back to it um, and then carry on because that would obviously solve the problem. So what I'm going to show you today is basically our new Velvet Attic vintage painting tape. I'm very excited about our painting tape. Basically, what we have here is a very high quality tape um, with a different adhesive to your standard masking tape. So we've had it made into four different sizes and I think that in itself is exciting because you can get quite limited sizing um, these days on even the painter's tape, the blue painter's tape you can get um, at some of the shops, you can't really get other sizes. So what we have here is we've gone with a 12 mil. This is our 12 mil tape. Um, very nice for thin stripes, it'll help you with your French grain stripes, um, jewelry boxes, little boxes where you need to put stripes on, this, this is the one you're going to use. Um, you'll find the tapes are very affordable and um, being a consumable product and um, this is the thin one which I will show you today when I do a French grain stripe. The second size we have is our 24 mil. There you can see it, so 2.4 centimeters. The rolls all come with 40 meters of tape on them so they are going to go a long way um, but this is our 2.4 uh, centimeter, 24 mil probably the most popular size you can get in most tapes. Then we decided we were going to go with a 4.8 centimeter, the 48 mil. Um, this in itself is also a very nice size, um, especially on larger furniture pieces. And if you want that broader stripe, instead of doubling up on your 24 mil, you can now just put your 48 mil down. And then we decided, well, what about when you want to maybe do stripes on the bottom lower section of your wall at home and put a beautiful dado rail in. You don't want to sit and put three or four 24 mils next to each other because that's obviously wastage as well. We've come out with a 72 millimeter. So this will be fantastic when you want to do long broad stripes or even the shorter ones on the walls and you need that broadness because you wouldn't go on a big wall and do a 20 4 mil or even a 12 mil, you'd obviously go anywhere from a 48 mil to a 72 mil, or you could alternate. Um, so this this is very exciting because it opens the door for a lot of um, people and clients that I know as well that have spoken to me about having difficulties in painting stripes. And yes, you can paint the perfect stripe. Unfortunately, with a lot of the tapes out there, if you get low quality masking tapes, and obviously if you don't use the right technique, your stripe's going to look like the dog's back leg. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to show you today how to do French grain stripe. You can use our tape 
and then I'm going to do some follow-up videos on other um, striping techniques that I think you'll find very useful. So let's get into it. Basically, I'm just going to demo on a on a flat MDF board. Okay, like this one. It's a, an A4 size or just short of an A4 size. I have pre-prepped a board to save some time because I know my videos can get a bit long because I, I do tend to go on about techniques and things. So what I've actually done is I've taken the MDF board and I've base coated two coats onto this board using our Velvet Attic Ivoire, which is our cream. Let me just open up and you can see that's our Ivoire. It's a beautiful grain sack color. Um, and I'm going to also be combining it and doing the stripes with our Baroque, which is our burgundy. Uh, sorry, these are my personal bottles, so they might not look clean in the room, but that's okay, it's just to show you. That's our burgundy. So I want to do the stripes today with the burgundy, um, basically to create the French grain stripe look. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to do it on the board. And this is how you can apply the technique onto the sides of cupboards, um, fronts of cupboards, shelves, whatever, as you, wherever you're going to do them. Okay, so to start off with, you do need to do a little bit of measuring just to get this right. You can take the 48 mil and you could stick a whole piece of it down here to guide you in the beginning but obviously you're going to end up wasting that piece. So that is an option. I'm just going to show you how I work with it. So I'm going to take my ruler. I'm going to put it next to the width of my board because I'm going to do my stripes this way, which is portrait. And it's 20 centimeters, so I'm going to do a little pencil mark at 10, halfway. Okay. I'm going to turn it around and do the same on this side. And I recommend you do the same too. Um, from both sides, otherwise what you're going to find is you're going to have a squiff strike, a skewer, sorry, squiff, it's slang. <laughs> so that's what we're going to do there. Second of all, I want my middle stripe to be this width, okay? French grain stripes have the nice thick width and then we've got two narrower stripes on the sides. I'll be doing them in the same colors today, but sometimes you can do all different colors on the thin stripes on the outside. It's totally up to you and what you're creating. So we know this is 48 mils, okay, 4.8 centimeters. Half of that is 2.4, okay? So if we move our ruler along to the 2.4 mark there, okay, I haven't zoomed in, but I'm on 2.4, just so you know. Where the zero is, I'm now gonna make a pencil mark there. And it's 4.8, so I'm now going to go to 4.8 and I'm gonna make my pencil mark there. Okay, I now have the width centered on my board. I'm then gonna turn it around, do the same on the other side. Place your ruler there, make sure you're on 10. Come back, we wanna to go to 2.4, put our little line and pencil, the pencils, you can just rub out so and you can paint over it 4.8 is over here and that I have now my marks I'm just going to lift it up in the hopes that you can actually there we are. I'm just checking on the laptop there we go you can see my three marks that was at the 10 centimeter mark that's when I measured to 2.4 centimeter and that's when I marked off at 4.8 now you could draw and join the lines if you want to, but you really don't need to. Um, I find the best alternative, let me put this away, is just to go in with your tape, line them up across both of the marks, and you are pretty good to go. So, I'll take my, sorry, I just need my open tape. Okay, this is my open small tape. So the 12 mil tape I'm using here. Now, don't pull too quickly on it and too fast on it or you'll tear it slightly diagonally. Just work slowly and get a nice piece off, which is what I'm going to do now. So I'm going to pull it slowly. Just make sure you've got enough to go across the board. I'm going to tear it off. You can cut it. 
so there's my piece of tape which is long enough for the board okay and I'm going to tell you a little trick here now let's say you were doing this strike on a newly painted metal cupboard or a plastic pot for example and you haven't had the 48 hours to let it dry and you still are concerned that this adhesive might pull off okay generally it won't but if you're concerned and you want to take a little bit of the stick off all you have to do move this up I'm going to do it on the tablecloth but you can do it on a towel or um, any fabric really you can even do it on your t-shirt it doesn't really make a difference it's not going to actually come off on you um, I take it and I put it down onto fabric like that and then I will pull it off and you'll find that it's less tacky okay I'm not going to do it here with these this is just an example I'm going to show you um, so that's what I would do if you need to or you're concerned in any way that you haven't had enough curing time for the paint on the non-porous surface so take off the extra stick now I'm going to line up on my two marks which is the one is a B I mean B I've got lighting I've got to do it and there as long as you've lined up with your two pencil marks you're straight put it down run your finger across if you have a little crease you can lift it put it down and lift that and there we go okay then this is on the outside of our middle grain stripe so we need to now have a gap and then we're going to have the next one so we're going to take another piece of this this is the 12 mil tape I'm just going to put it slowly so we get a long enough piece there we go tear it off or cut it and you're going to line that one up right next to this one it's going to save you measuring more go and we're going to run it across sorry I just want to line it up there we go and we put that down okay and then we're going to take a third one Take our third one and you're going to put that one right next to the one you just put down okay now we take this one and we pull it off and we've got a perfectly measured stripe there I like to just stick him on the side there Okay, and then I'm going to now turn it around and come to the other side. Same thing, take off a piece. Because this is for the opposite side of the grain strap. We're now going to take now where we would measured that other measurement of 2.4 and 4.8 the, the outside, so you had those three pencil marks these on the outside of your pencil and now we're going to put that down I'm now going to take the other piece I used earlier put him back against there he's going to be one piece I basically but it's okay to hurry on the better let's do that again. I don't want to block with my head if I come across too far and then you can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> okay, so there we go. Remember you can always lift and position if you need to, okay? And let's get our third one. Okay, so when I prepped this board, I went straight onto the MDF wood 
and I base coated two coats of Ivoire. That's the cream. I only needed two coats. I used a soft synthetic nylon brush to base coat with. I'm going to show you our brushes. They are available from us to order and from our stockists. Okay, so there I've joined the three and our little long one colors here. Yeah. So we've got the stripes. Okay, so I'm just going to lift it up here for you to see. This is our 4.8 centimeter we measured. We put a piece of our painting tape, the velvetated painting tape there. That's the 12 mil one you see, and there. We laid another one right next to it. We put the third one down, we removed the middle one. And we did the same on this side. Now, one of the things you need to do when you have stripes or want to paint stripes, you've got to make sure where you're going to paint, that tape is down properly. Okay, you can run with your nail, but it's a bit of a mission. You can use the back of a spoon, rubbing it up and down, that works fine. I really just like using an eraser. So what I'm going to do is just on the side where I'm painting, I'm just going to run across with my eraser and on this side. So the two inner sides of that one. And then this one I'm also running on this side because I'm going to be painting in the middle. Okay. And on that side, this will just make sure you've got it down. And then just dust off the shavings of the, from the eraser. Make sure there are none shavings on there. I'm going to do is just fold these over so we don't stick to the tablecloth because that's coming soon. <laughs> okay, that's where we are ready to do our French grain stripe. So now we get back to the fun part, which is the painting. So, I'm going to start my stripes using my base color. This is the big, big difference between good stripes, perfect stripes, and back leg, the dog stripe, or dog's back leg. I'm going to take my color, I work with the paper color, I've got some paper towel. I'm just going to take a, basically a small, smaller or medium size synthetic nylon brush um it's just really it is nylon it's just um colored here so it makes it look a bit better i dampen my brush first i'm going to blot it onto some paper because i don't want a dripping wet brush but if you do this with your brushes and you dampen them first you won't build up skins and you of like fast onto your brush and you also want to actually get build up in your brush quickly and that saves your brushes. I can actually just work out of the lid here. So to avoid bleed through what you have to do is take a bit of your base color which is our ivoire. I'm going to lift it here and hope you can see what I'm doing and this is where we're going to be painting it. So we're going to take our ivoire and we're going to paint that towards that tape and then towards that tape you've got to paint into the tape the reason you do that is because if there is anywhere let's say that you were erasing and you might not have applied the same amount of pressure um, this is going to actually stop bleed through because your base color is there now. So if there is a bleed through, your base color is going through, which is exactly what needs to show when you do the other side. But it's important that you do it in both directions. I'm going to hold it up with my arm. I hope you can see what I'm doing. It's really worth the time, taking the time to do this or the perfect stripe. In my other videos I'm going to show you, I'm actually going to try and record them all in 
<laughs> in today <laughs> um, because you will be able to see other techniques of using stripes and how you can do techniques over the paper without paper, I mean the tape in other words, without having any buckling of any form. So if you need to then run down smoothly, that's fine. Just make sure you have painted in both directions. I'll lift that up. You can see I've painted over the tape a bit. That's going to dry. I'm now going to carry on and I'm going to paint into my stripes here. Smooth it as well. Don't leave ridges. Smooth it out. Ridges are not going to be a problem if you do that, especially if you want to do any kind of technique over it. So we're going to paint in. And then we're just going to smooth it up and down. It's going to dry and it'll be the same color as your base color. So you won't have to worry about that. You can even put a little coat over your pencil mark if you want. We'll just erase that when you were doing the eraser. And then I'm going to do the same now on this side. Those are busy drying. Always into the tape, not away from the tape. Into the tape. Now, if you do this with hardware brushes, you are going to find it a little bit harder. So I would recommend you look at a synthetic brush. I'll show you, we actually have some big ones in stock that are stunning. I'm now going to do this stripe and I'm going to paint into the tape there, that way, and this way. Same as what I did over there. Let's turn it a bit. I don't want to block you so you can see what I'm doing. I paint in, spread it down, then we're going to paint it that way. I'm going to smooth it. And you know, a lot of times when you do stripes, people will say to you, oh, don't take it off till it's dry, don't take it off unless it's wet, while it's still wet, or take it off while it's wet and not when it's dry. And um, You're going to see with our tapes that you actually don't have to take it off wet is what, with what you normally had to do with masking tape. You're going to be able to do techniques or multiple coats of paint and remove it later and it's going to be great. Okay, so I have painted in there with our base color, Ivoire, it's our cream. It's almost a grain set color. I have painted, just to recap, this way and that way into the tape. Basically, if there's any bead through along our masking, uh, masking tape, painting tape, you are not going to have a bleed through now because your base color has basically gone under the tape if there was any possibility of paint going underneath. Okay, so you only have to do that once. Make sure you've smoothed your paint, there's no ridges. Then you're going to put that aside to let it dry and then we'll carry on. Okay, we're back and our board has now dried after painting our base coat into the tapes on either side. We're now going to go on to the color we'll use for the actual stripes, which is our Baroque, it's our Burgundy. Okay, and I'm going to be using that now to paint in the stripes. So to start with, move the bottle a bit. I'm now going to turn it at an angle, hopefully I won't block you with my hand because I am left handed. And you're now going to start painting your stripes. So let's get going. 
you paint all the way up to where your tape is, you have to fill up right there, otherwise it's not going to be very nice. So make sure you fill your tape right up, smooth it out as you go. Don't put it on excessively thick, I always say rather add an extra um, coat if you need to, and be patient. Um, because otherwise you're going to have a lot of ridging and you, and you don't want that. So just smooth it out, that's where these brushes are so awesome. I'm also going to show you the different sizes in a minute. And we're just going to smooth that out nice and easy. Long soft strokes. Now I've gone right up to the tape. I think you can basically see what I'm doing there. It will need a second coat. But I'm going to move on to the narrow stripes as well at the same time because they're in the same colour. I'm just going to go over with the same brush. You can change to small if you feel you want to. Just don't go past your tape. That you don't want to do. Just keep going. Smooth it out. Okay. Turn it and I'm going to do the same here. Same thing again, make sure you reach all the way up to the tape, otherwise you're going to be short and it will be a messed up line. Right. So I think what's really nice with the painting tape is that we, a lot of times, and I'll show in my other videos, you can use the tape to help you measure and you don't have to sit there with levelers and rulers a mile long and tape measures and you name it. Um, you get your first piece down straight, especially on a big surface, and from then onwards you're good um, to go. You can do the in-between as like a show. So I've painted one coat on there. I would think another one will be fine. We'll check it now, but I am going to allow this to dry. So while that's drying, let's put that over there. I'd like to discuss some of the brushes with you. So, um, these are synthetic nylon brushes that I was talking about or speaking about. We sell them in a variety of sizes. So we have a number 12. Um, that was actually the size I was using now to paint this. So there's your number 12. We have a number 10 as well, which is almost just over half of the size of the 12. And then we've got an eight, a six, get that next to it, a four, and a two. And of course, the smaller brushes will definitely come in handy if you're doing lots of narrow stripes and things like that. Beautiful before base coating our embellishments, um, which you're going to love soon when you see our new embellishments. Um, so yes, we've got six different sizes you can purchase. Um, that our sockets can also purchase and then we have what we call the the biggie <laughs> it's a size 26 synthetic nylon so it's not a uh, colored hair per se like the others but it's the same no difference in the hair uh, broader handle this will be quite nice for doing in those really big stripes with the like 72 mils because you're going to be able to just paint that stripe in quickly quickly down and you're done it'll work with the 48 mils as well so that is really nice so these are the brushes we have as well this is how the tape is basically going to be presented from our stockists and from us uh, packaged branded with that little velvet attic it will have stock code labels for our stockists as well so you can see the 12 mil there and the 24 mil that's our 24 mil and then over here is, I'm just letting my paint dry, so I'm showing you all this, is our 48 mil, that's our 48 mil, and then our 72 mil, which is the big one. Okay, so they're going to come packaged, which I think is also um, a much, much nicer thing than a lot of the masking tapes are, as you do find the sides being 
the adhesive um, can tend to pick up a lot of debris and fluff in here and stuff like that and build up. So that'll save that from happening and any kind of shop soiling. Right, let's see how our paint is going. It's got some thicker areas that are drying. Okay, I'll be back with you as soon as they dry. Okay, so we're back and our first coat is pretty much dry. Still feel a bit of coldness here where it was slightly thick, but that's fine. So I'm going to go with our second coat now. Remember, your brush is damp. I didn't actually rinse my brush. I soaked it in my brush basin while I was busy. It wasn't a long wait. Um, so that was fine for the brushes and damage it. So we're going to go back into our Baroque Burgundy and we're going to paint our second coat. Right up to the tape, as I said before, don't go short. Make sure you cover right up to the tape, get a bit more paint if you're short and you can't reach. It was a little less there and then pull it out and then as you brush I tend to go lighter with my brush and get a smooth finish. I think that's the trick too and I think it's all about you you know you want to create if you're going to be do, redoing furniture or um, to sell or for yourself or anything like that I think we want to always aim for some professionalism. Um, having really nice beautiful stripes makes a world of difference to a piece. Like I say, you don't want the dog's back leg <laughs> having a wonk here and there as it goes down the line. Okay, and I'm going to move to the sides here as well. Like I said, you can use a smaller brush. I'm just going to use the same size. More paint. Turning it around, I'm going to now do that other side. Also, all the way to the tape. Doesn't matter if you go over the tape, no stress about that. You do it without a worry. You're talking about when you use this, we're talking a much higher quality tape here. Um, that's what we do at Velvet Attic. We pride ourselves on our quality. Our quality of our water slides, our stencils, our paints. Um, we have a an amazing range of paints, 79 colors to our range. Um, basically the largest color range, actually, I think. Um, and then of course we have all the mediums and varnishes in matte satin and gloss and glues and chalkboard paints and it just goes on. So we do have a, a really big range of products and variety. I love color. You can at any time work with three values of color on your piece, furniture, wall, whatever you're doing. You can work with three values, light, medium and dark value of any of the colors. Everything is intermixable. Um, the varnish, I have personally used the varnish for over 20 years on my personal canvases. Um, Water-based polyurethane, non-yellowing, durable, uh, heat resistant, scuff resistant, um, fantastic, fantastic varnish. Um, and I must say, I'm a big lover of the matte and our matte is matte <laughs> and our gloss is gloss. So you get a lovely finish and you can create the finish you want with it. So I'm just having a look here. I might do an extra coat just to make it a little bit more solid because I see there's a few patches there. So we'll do that now. I'm just gonna let it dry a bit and then I'll be back with you shortly. Okay, so we're back here and um, our paint is basically dried. Not cured enough, but it has dried enough for me to continue with this. Um, during the process of applying these different coats, as I said before, allow each coat to dry properly. Um, don't pull any of the tape off or anything like that until you're done. So going on, I'm going to put this third coat on. I hadn't rinsed my brush again, I just soaked it already because it didn't take that long. I'm going to go back into our Baroque Burgundy and we're going to paint our final coat.
and smooth it out nicely. Remember, like I said before, not too thick. Don't want to leave it thick with ridges. I'm actually going to lift this just to show you. Do you see that? Yeah, that's too thick. You've got to spread that out. It's applying thin coats of paint, and that way you can apply multiple coats of paint. And then with a little less pressure, you can start smoothing the paint out. That lovely finish. And then we're going to carry on with the side stripes here. As I mentioned before, don't worry about painting over the tape. Carry on. Now you see normally with masking tape, by the third coat like this, there's no way it's bubbling, it's not totally lifting, but it's creasing and making its little bubbles. And that was always a problem as well. So if you needed multiple colors or layers to make a solid stripe or um, doing techniques over it, which I'll show you in a couple of videos I'm going to do after this, um, and you can see other ways of using your stripes. So this is just the standard um, French grain sack stripes. Everybody likes to do them. And I've just worked with um, our Ivoire, which is our um, cream color, which is a lovely color for the French, for the sack color, in other words. And then I've taken our burgundy as well, just to check in my ends here. Burgundy, which will work well. You can also use navy blues. We have a beautiful color, a very popular color called Tosca. It's our navy blue, um, and it really is gorgeous. Um, that would work beautifully as well if you want to go in the blue tones. And then as for the dark green tones, what you can do there is you can use our La Memoir. It's a lovely dark green um, color and it's not in the olive range and it's definitely not in the teal range so it's sort of in between it's, it's beautiful as well that will work beautifully with french grain stripe okay so close the paints up I'm going to rinse my brush off which i will then clean afterwards with our brush cleaner we have a vintage brush cleaner i've also used for over 20 years um, comes in a small bottle, 50 ml bottle, and you literally use a drop or two in your brushes, and that is it. So it goes a very long way. I did demonstrate cleaning your brushes with our Marie Antoinette in the Dame de Pompidou Mixed Media Canvas video. Um, towards right at the end, it's a long video, <laughs> um, you'll see how I cleaned the brushes and used our brush cleaner on there. Okay, so now this last coat, you don't need to leave it to dry to remove the tape. You can remove the tape at this point, which is perfect. So I'm just going to get them off the back here, because I pushed them down as I was going. That one up, on the video now. Okay. Yeah, there we go, just to show you, that's our brush cleaner, 50 more bottle, just need a drop. Stunning brush cleaner, I've used it for many, many years, um, especially even on my art brushes. So I'm just going to lift one for now just to show you. So what I'm going to do is when I pull, I hope you can see this, let me check I'm in line with it. When you pull, you're going to pull away, not towards, pull away from your stripe. That is the trick, yeah. Okay, so we're going to pull away. Okay, I'm going to pull away. See, I've got it at an angle there. As I pull, just pull slowly. Don't panic, just go slowly, little bit by little bit. 
Mm -hmm. Und wer aus dir? Alles. Dann rechts und dann. Now going to undo this side. So back, back. So this one where we've got painting on both sides, just pull it straight. So that's your safest. If you see any paint pulling, then pull the opposite direction, but you shouldn't. Okay, let's go with this one. We're going to pull slowly. And you can also, I like to, because I don't really like the long pieces, so I tend to stop and roll it and then pull again. Now, I don't know if you can see <laughs> from there, but they are absolutely perfect. Slowly, slowly, over the edge, and take it off. There's the one side. Okay, moving on to the other. Do the in-between one first again. Well, no, not again. I thought I just did. Yeah, as long as it is Okay, we're pulling. I always say to everybody, don't rip it off. Go slowly. You've taken the time to get this far. You really don't have to rip it off. Slowly, slowly. And I must admit, this is how I've done my stripes for donkey's ears. It works beautifully and even better now having our painting tape. I'm very chuffed with it. I think it's awesome. It hasn't pulled any paint off. Okay, we got one more to go. Now, I will still follow the principle of pulling outwards as I do this one, because I, it's just that's how we always did it, and it works a bit. So pull away from it, so you can roll it up, and it's not such a long strand. And there you have it. Perfect French brain stripes. Don't know if you can actually get better than that. So have a look. It's stunning. I love it. I love French grain straps. Um, I'm very excited to show you some of my others shortly as well um, in the other video what I'm going to do. So that's how you do them. Allow this to dry now properly. Let's say you're doing this on your piece of furniture or um, wall or whatever, door, you name it. Let this dry properly. Um, I always say to people, if you can, Wait overnight and then varnish. Um, and varnish matte satin gloss, whichever you prefer. With a soft synthetic brush, you'll get the best finish. Um, a lot of clients come to me um, and say to me they are getting streaking through their paint. Um, not necessarily even using our brand, other brands. The reason you get the streaking through your paint is the brush you're using. Hardware brushes, they make streaks finish. Um, synthetic nylons, you can smooth your paint out and get a beautiful finish. Um, so when you do your varnish as well, you don't want that streaking that's coming through it. Get yourself some synthetic brushes, they're not expensive compared. It really isn't. It's not like you're buying golden tacklons or natural hair brushes. Um, do yourself a favor, get yourself some of these brushes, um, use them, you can spread the paint beautifully with them and they really are worth, worth you know, having in your, your brush set and things like that. Um, so if you don't want streaking through your paint and you don't want streaking through your varnish, synthetic nylon, not hardware brushes, it makes a big difference. So we have beautiful French grey straps. I hope you've learned from this video what I've done with it. You'll see a couple of others coming in. I'm going to try and make them a little bit shorter maybe. Um, but 
This was done using our 12mm Velvet Attic Vintage Painting Tape. It's our new product, um, product that's come out. We have our stock, we have, well, they're nearly packaged, ready to dispatch to our stockists, and you'll be able to purchase them, as I said before, in 12mm, 24mm, 48mm, and 72mm for those big pieces. Okay, so you've got 40 meters of tape per roll. It's a lot of tape. Um, you can see there's, it's, it's not gonna go short. It's lots, 40 meters is a lot. Um, but if you've got any questions or you'd like to stock our product or any of our products, please feel free to contact us. Um, we, like I said, we've got the whole paint range going, everything like that, everything you need to make professional pieces and all our products highest quality you can find so until next time next video <laughs> which i think you're going to enjoy um, more striping but with extra technique so you can see how to use it um, without having to take that painter's tape off straight away or you can or basking tape you can just go over and do all these techniques so i'll be back with you shortly with a new video on that until next time Thanks for watching. Take care.